So Breath of the Wild 2 is pretty okay, but have you ever heard of Bean of the Wild? Bean of the Wild is a game that I started work on in the previous video. Basically, it's all of Breath of the Wild's mechanics remade in Unity, but with a bean. Nintendo released a trailer for the next Zelda game recently, and there is a really cool mechanic shown off in it. In the trailer, you reverse a spiky thing back in time, and with it, you murder a bokoblin. So yeah, I'm gonna recreate that mechanic, based entirely on those 5 seconds of gameplay, so it might be a bit hard. But before I begin this video, I have to give a formal apology. I have made a severe and continuous lapse in judgment. In my previous videos, I referred to this character in Breath of the Wild as Zelda, and you all were sure to correct me quickly. So, I would like to correct myself once and for all. This character's true name is... Like, and subscribe, and wishes, catch a comment on Steam, and join my Patreon. Okay, let's go. So now I have to plan some stuff. Looking at the trailer, it seems like using the rewind rune on an object makes the object go backwards in time for a certain amount of time at the same speed that I originally did these actions. So there are a few things I need to do. First off, you need to be constantly recording the positions and rotations of any object that can be rewinded in time. Then I need to make it so that whenever an object is hit with a ray cast and the rune is active, the object will disable its rigid body and will lurk back through the positions and rotations at a fixed speed. And that's basically it. The one thing about this project is that we haven't actually seen the mechanic in the game, so I'm just guessing how it works. So I could be wrong, but I think I'm pretty close. I started out by creating a script for recording the positions and rotations of the object. Basically, I created a list of vector 3s and a list of quaternions. Then I made a fixed update countdown, and when this countdown reaches 0, which is a few times every second, the rotation and position of the object are added to this list. This list has a dynamic length, meaning that whenever the game first starts, for a few seconds the list won't be a full rewind in length. And whenever the list gets too long, which I just made 20 positions, the oldest member on the list is removed. The one thing I'm not entirely sure about this is how performance intensive it is. I didn't notice any hit with just one or two object recording positions, but I imagine that it would get quite intensive if I made it possible for all objects to be able to be rewinded in time, which I assume is what they pretty much have in Breath of the Wild too. So it is pretty possible that Nintendo has some sort of built-in engine solution for recording and replaying positions and rotations. This is used like games in Rainbow Six to create kill cams and end around replays. Now they have the first step completed, it's time to get onto the actual rewinding mechanic. The concept is pretty simple. I just need to disable the rigid body for the object and then move it backwards for the list of positions and rotations. Since I recorded these positions at a constant rate, I can just make the weights between these points a constant that is the same as the rate it is recorded at. Finally, I just need to make the object lurk through this list of positions and rotations rather than just teleporting, and then also make the object re-enable the rigid body at the end of the rewind. After a few very odd bugs, I had this working pretty well. The main issue was that whenever you start the rewind, the first point will take just as much time to lurk to as the rest, which is inaccurate. I just fixed this by taking the time since the latest entry was added to the list and then subtracting that from the lerp time for the first point. Now all that's left to do is polish, which let's be honest is the most important part. There are a few main things I need to polish. First, I need particles. Second, I need some sort of preview with a rewind with ghost objects. Finally, I just need to add the cool black and white effect from the trailer, so I got on it. I decided to do the previews first. I made some object prefabs that just consist of an empty mesh filter and a mesh renderer. This mesh renderer uses the said filter and a translucent material, and these are spawned at half the points on the list of positions and rotations for the rewind. Then I just made them take the mesh of the rewinded object as well as the scale to make the preview objects look exactly like the original object, and this resulted in an effect I'm pretty proud of. After that, I got to recreating some of the visual effects from the trailer. I set up the material to be slightly translucent and added an outline. Next, I decided to recreate the monochrome shader that kicks in whenever you start rewinding. Using Unity's URP post-processing stack, I simply made an override that turns the saturation down to negative 100, but then I disabled this override. And I made the rewind script turn this effect on and off. But this applied to everything, including the rewind objects, so I created an overlay camera for the rewind object that doesn't have post-processing. So the effect now works. But since the overlay camera goes on top of the main camera, the rewind object is now always rendered on top of everything else, which I guess is okay because it's translucent. And hey, fun Zelda fact, but if you wishlist Couch Combat on Steam, then you're cool. But seriously, my main project is called Couch Combat and is a split screen multiplayer FPS that I'm getting ready to release on Steam early this year, and wishlisting really helps me in the Steam algorithm, so it's a really easy, free way to support the channel if you want to. Okay, sell out time over. Finally, I did some testing with the rewind. I realized that a lot of the time the rewind is mostly just sitting in place, so I wrote a simple algorithm to remove the oldest positions from the list if they are equal to the previous position in the list. This basically just removes pauses from the end of the list and also makes it impossible to rewind objects that were just sitting there, which sort of makes sense in my opinion. Other than that, I just finished up the project by improving the third person movement and exporting it. And if you want the final project, it's on itch.io, and as always, the source files are on my Patreon for supporters. 
Here is the final version of the rune. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe. And also if this video gets a decent amount of support then I may make a final follow up where I recreate everything I'm missing from Breath of the Wild 1 and 2, including climbing, the flamethrower, a better world, combat, and more. Or I might not do it. Who knows? New couch combat devlog coming soon. Bye.